And now we are here for the last talk of the session uh, from Benjamin. Benjamin is a engineer in MLPA. It's also sponsoring the, this uh, Riot Summit. Uh, he has been maintainer and contributor to Riot for a long time. And uh, we have seen from the previous talk that uh, firmware uh, updates are really crucial to any IoT uh, scenario. So he's actually going to show us uh, how you can use Suit to update Riot devices, but from, with firmware that is served from other Riot uh, nodes. Uh, so with this uh, excuse, he will show us a demo of this working, tell us a bit more about the current state and new features of Riot's uh, virtual file system and uh, the GCO app uh, interaction with it and how is it done through the API. So, I think that's uh, a video. Yeah, this is going to be a really exciting talk. We can see the slides now. Perfect. Okay. Um, yeah, um, I'm, I'm Benjamin uh, Menpico on, on GitHub and I'm working for MLPA. We're doing um, yeah sensor solutions uh, for, for customers. And today I'm talking about how to update uh, sensor networks using Riot, uh, yeah. So uh, the idea is that uh, you have a, a sensor network in the field somewhere and it doesn't have a, a uplink all the time. Uh, this, in this particular use case is mounted onto a train. To a train. Um, <clears throat> and the, the gateway device that um, serves, serves as the uplink um, has then to cache the sensor data from the from the sensor network and it also has to cache the updates for the nodes and there are multiple nodes of the same type so we really only want to download the data once and yeah then serve it to the to the network uh, but also what we want to do is we want to be able to update the network offline uh, entirely so if there's no uplink, uplink we want to be able to just swap out the dsd card and the uh, nodes will all get a new firmware version from the SD card. Um, the good thing is uh, that everything we need for that is in Riot by now. Um, it happened during the last year from different people as well. Um, so I'll just give an overview of, of what's there now, uh, of what can be used. Um, some things are not so new even, but uh, yeah, this is more of a practical guide uh, of what can be done uh, with the current state. So we have a VFS layer on which we can uh, store files and uh, yeah, have, have update files on a file system. Uh, we have a, a file server with, uh, that can serve files via, via co-op, uh, just like the AOCO file server would. And we have the suit updates that can fetch updates from a co-op file server. So uh, that all plays nicely together. Um, so to put it together, let's start with a file system. Um, historically, applications would always mount the file system. Of course, not, not very ergonomic. So uh, like if you would, would uh, write an editor on Linux, you wouldn't start by writing code to mount a file system. So um, yeah, we now have a VFS default module that selects a board defined default file system, just like native default selects a board defined default network interface. And uh, we have a cross file array of mount points that is defined by the board. And there you can specify uh, where to mount what. Um, to make things a bit more portable and consistent, we have some conventions. For example, um, flash devices get mounted to uh, NVM and uh, SD cards get mounted to SD. Um, to be able to write portable code across boards, there is a macro that selects whatever is uh, available. So if you use VFS default data, you get either NVM0 or SD0, depending on what the board defines. Uh, if you want some different mount point, you can, of course, set it yourself, um, but that's the default. And if you want your file system to be, to be automatically initialized, if it can't be mounted, there's also a module for that, which will then format your uh, device if, if it can't be mounted. Um, so how does it look like? Well, you configure your MTD device as you're used to, and then you just have this uh, VFS auto mount macro, 
where we say what file system we want. Um, there's a little helper function to get the um, generic MTD device from this uh, yeah, implementation specific one. Uh, then you set the mount point and to uh, get the cross file array sorted, you have to also count uh, which mount point it is, but that's a small hassle. And this is an example for uh, SPI flash where you would typically use LFS. Uh, if you have a SD card, you want to probably mount uh, it with FAT. Uh, you can do that as well. Uh, this is an example for the uh, ST host controller on the uh, Atmel SM0 platform, or uh, microchip by now, actually. Um, yeah, so pretty straightforward stuff. Um, only single line of code to your board, and you have a file system. You then, of course, have to also add a few lines to your makefile dep to say, um, yeah, what's the default file system, just like you would with the um, native default. Um, and then when you add uh, VFS default to your application, you get a file system automatically mounted and you can use it. Um, yeah, then you have your shell commands that are, that are uh, yeah, already well known, I think, uh, to interact with the file system. With mount points, you have files, uh, yeah, just, just normal stuff. Um, then to uh, serve those files via gcorp, it's also pretty straightforward. Uh, we have the gcorp file server now. Just give it the uh, path it should serve as the argument uh, in your resource description. And you can also enable write support uh, with put and delete, uh, but you don't have to if you just want to serve updates. Uh, in this example, like you, you could have, um, yeah, <laughs> you just have one line that, that in this case serves the firmware, uh, serves the firmware, uh, and it allows you to get the firmware just specify the handler. And it's in this case, you would serve SD zero firmware. Uh, ideally, you would use this this macro, but I think it's easier to understand uh, more explicit here. Uh, and then you can just add your normal, your application specific uh, co-op endpoints, just examples here, and uh, yeah, reg register the listener. And then uh, on the on the client side, yeah, you just use suit as you're used to, but maybe you're not used to using suit. So you either have a worker thread or you do it yourself. So it's stick with the worker thread because it's easy. You just start the worker thread, uh, which is there because uh, yeah, the suit update needs a bit of RAM to store an entire flash page but uh, we can also move that to events uh, soon. So yeah, you don't need an extra thread and just an event thread that can be used for everything. Uh, you just give it a URL, in this case, a co-op URL where it finds the manifest and then it will download the manifest, apply the firmware update and yeah, that's, that's it. Um, for, for downloading, um, oh yeah, we, we, but we wanted to, uh, we wanted to, uh, yeah, how, how do we get the, the files uh, from the firmware update on our um, core file server, right? Sure, we can just swap out the SD card, uh, but um, we would also like to download a directory, like mirroring, mirroring a directory from a server. So um, yeah, we just we just pointed to uh, a directory served by, for example, AO, AO core file server or some other core server, and now there. Some convenience functions um, to download files with NanoCorp. Uh, there is NanoCorp VFS get, which downloads a file from a, well, just a file. I mean, it's a corp endpoint, and the uh, payload gets stored to a, to a file uh, with, block, with, with blockwise get. And uh, in the same manner, there's also a v NanoCorp VFS put, which uploads a file uh, to a GCorp endpoint uh, in a blockwise manner. And there is the uh, nanocorp link format get URL command. That one's still pending review, but it can be used to uh, iterate the directory. Uh, like if your if your co-op server uh, serves a link, a link for uh, a, a link format listing, um, as for example the AIO co-op file server or the G co-op file server does, um, you can use that to recursively nano recursively. To, um, to download all the files in the directory. And yeah, we just use that to basically mirror, mirror a directory. Um, so the situation is the same as we would, uh, as, as if we would exchange an SD card. 
there's probably uh, yeah have one text file that specifies the current uh, gener firmware generation. Uh, so uh, yeah, it's probably a nicer way to do that maybe with a CBO file format. But yeah, for this for this purpose, it's it's totally fine. Um, and there are also uh, shell commands to call these these functions on the shell if you want something interactive. And yeah. Um, so if you if you have the firmware on the C card, uh, we don't want to download it from from a co-op file server. You can do that too. Uh, it's actually it's actually pretty easy. We just enable the EFS transport uh, instead, or in addition to the co-op transport, and then our URL has a file instead of a co-op and points to a, a yeah a location in the file system. Now, rest works just the same. Um, we have also some smaller features in suit now. Uh, keys are stored in a global location now, not in uh, every write checkout. If you keep multiple write checkouts around, that might be a bit uh, convenient uh, now that you don't exactly accidentally flash with the wrong key. And you can also uh, encrypt your suit key now with a password. There's also a script to uh, re-encrypt re your currently unencrypted key. And yeah, there's also a pending PR that allows you to have multiple keys. The idea being that you could have a development build, like you have a de device that is uh, currently in the lab and you want to ship it later, and you still have a development firmware, uh, but you also wanted to accept production images. So you could do that and just have multiple public keys uh, flashed to it, and then you just update it with the, with the right firmware. And yeah. Um, that's that's already uh, it. So to keep things a bit more interesting, I also <laughs> wanted to uh, wanted to uh, present you how this looks. Um, uh, didn't sacrifice a goat today, and hope it works anyway. Uh, so uh, here we have two nodes. One is the SEMI54, and one is the SEMR21. They're both connected through a slip connection. Uh, you, can see, you can see here. Um, oh yeah, sure. Currently, they are not connected through slip connection because the SEMR51 only has its Ethernet interface. Uh, but we have a firmware lying around. Um, uh, is that the right one? Is it zero? Is it? No, maybe card got loose. <laughs> speaking of demo, speaking of demo bots, anyway. So yeah, now we got a now we got our file system, uh, and we have here a firmware for the semi fifty four. So we just say suit fetch, and then we use the file URL. The suit fetch is just, just basically just a just a shell um, shell command that does the same thing as the um, yeah as this uh, suit worker thread command would do. Just give it the manifest, and it will um, it will of course fail because um, why would it not? Um, it's, oh, yeah, because I added one. <laughs> Where's the zero? Uh, yeah, so now it will. Uh, actually, this is only so slow because it prints this uh, progress bar. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> because otherwise, reading from file systems, of course, are quite fast, and also writing to Flash is quite fast. Uh, so, yeah, that's just limited by the, by the terminal. And yeah, or you just disable. I mean, usually, usually you would disable the the progress bar, uh, but it's of course uh, nicer to look at. And now we have suddenly two interfaces, and uh, um, yeah, uh, we can can ping. So on the other on the other end, we have this the sem um, sem R twenty one, um, and well, maybe it's let's uh, show you the uh, nc get command first. Uh, you can just uh, basically download something from. Uh, URL it also of course supports DNS. Um, so you could use uh, like we have a firmware endpoint and at this you then hear the uh, files. And then we have here a text file that we can just print to standard out. Like usually you would say the destination, but there is a you can also <laughs> do that. And then to fetch a firmware update, we see here we have well actually this is a limitation of the shell on this one because it would actually be in this uh, folder. Uh, with the right convention, but of course you can name your manifest and files whatever you want. Um, so you would do a suit, a suit fetch uh, from co-op. 
on uh, on this, and then we have the oops, and then we have here this uh, manifest, which is the one for the SEMR twenty one, and uh, yeah, to download it over this slip connection, and also uh, update firmware. Now this is yeah coming from the SEMR from the SD card on the on the SEMR uh, fifty four. And yeah, now we also have something new here. Now this is a border router. Um, and yeah, this yeah, also got a got a prefix from the from the SEMA 50 54 and uh, yeah. Do whatever you want. So yeah, that's that's basically it. Just just a bit of an overview what what's new and yeah, how, how you can do firmware updates from, from one right device to another. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks, Benjamin. It's really nice to have like a real live demo on dismitifying that uh, this actually works. It's not so <laughs> complicated in the yeah. end. No? <laughs> uh, yeah, questions, comments. Uh, this is awesome. Yeah. Uh, thank you for your talk. Really impressive what is uh, possible with Riot right out, out of the box. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, I got two questions. Number one, how do you do the discovery? So when the sensors want to download this firmware from the gateway, how do they find the IP address of the gateway? Yeah, I mean, the gateway address is hard-coded. As you saw, it's this devbeef one. We just also have... Uh, Custom address, so the gateway has a has a fixed address that is well known, and the uh, the sensors. I mean, the they also register with the gateway for other things, uh, but this is all application specific. So there's nothing here generic in right that could be used for that purpose. Okay, thank you. And second question. Uh, this is for maybe a little bit off topic, but you mentioned that you are building sensors with right. Are you utilizing SOL or something like that? So no. sensor abstraction? Okay. We're just using the, the APIs directly because SOL doesn't have any support for, for events or um yeah. So I try to add it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe we get there. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Yeah. More questions here? No? Comments online? Is that something online? No? Yeah. yeah. Really great. Yeah. Okay, then with this, we conclude the networking session, I guess. Let's uh, thank Benjamin again. Yeah. <laughs>